Great news, guys. Malaysia has recorded the lowest number of COVID-19 cases in the past two weeks. So as of yesterday, April the 9th, the, uh, the number of new cases was 109. But the number of recoveries was 121. So uh, Health Minister Director General Noor Hashim Abdullah reported in a press conference that uh, this has been happening for two days in a row now. So there have been more recoveries than new cases. So the total number of cases for COVID-19 in Malaysia is currently up to 4,228. Okay, but the uh, number of recoveries has hit 1,608. So that brings it to almost 40%. 38% of the total number of positive cases have now recovered. Okay, so that's more than a third of the people's, uh, which is good news. Um, of course, we still want to keep it under wraps. Um, but uh, yes, um, there's still no news on whether the MCO will be extended. So I don't know whether people are going to take that as good or bad news. I think uh, most people regard it slightly negatively you know, because of economic factors and whatnot. Fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, what are the things that you guys are, uh, have been up to? Hmm? You guys are keeping well, hanging in there, working from home this fine Friday. Yeah. Hey, um, what are the two factors that affect the spread of COVID-19? What are the two factors, the two main factors? Number one, how dense the population is. And number two, how dense the population is. You get it? The denser the population, the denser the population. Bit of plain words there. Anyway, uh, but yes, uh, happy Good Friday! Hey! It's, uh, it's Easter. Yeah, it may not feel like it. Happy Easter to you all. Hope you all are having a good Friday. A fantastic Friday. It's almost the weekend. So let's hop to our Korean lesson. Okay, so uh, yeah, we're now working on a series of, uh, you know, things you might say to, um, you know, a partner, a significant other, you know, in a, in a kind of a, romantic kind of relationship, I guess. Yeah, you could say that. Okay, uh, but you know, if you want to say these things to your friends, uh, you know, then yeah, you know, by all means. So, um, yeah, how's uh, how's the Korean coming along? You guys pick up some phrases apart from annyeong? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, I must say, yeah, you, you're you looking, you're looking great today. Okay, now I know you maybe didn't do your hair up as nice, didn't, didn't gel it because you're staying at home, you're working, working, working from home, but that's okay. You still look great. Okay, so today's phrase, let's uh, get into it. Um, I mean, it's a little bit longer than our usual ones, but you know, I think we're kind of running out of uh, four character phrases in Korean. Okay, so uh, let's get with the Hangul. So the N and the O, N O, no, and the mouth and the U, Mu. No move. So that's uh, that's why that's a normal distribution for those of you who still remember your statistics. Okay. So no move. Okay. And which means like a lot. Um, and uh, this, what is this? This is a g sound. Or well, can be a k as well. G okay. Okay. And what is this? It's a U, U, G, E, G, E. Okay, so that's kind of that sounds like a, like a ghost in um, Mandarin or uh, Hokkien. G, E, G, E. Yeah. All right. And then that empty circle, pineapple head, whatever. And two sticks to the left, stuck to a, the big bamboo, is a Yo. Not spelled like that. It's spelled Y E O. Yo. Okay. And these two. So empty circle, ignore you. And this is wo. Okay. And this is yo. Wo yo. 
So this is a, this is a, what's called a Woyo mask from some tribe somewhere. Okay, I did not just make that up. Okay, so let's put it together. Nomu, Guiyo, Woyo. Nomu, Guiyo, Woyo. Okay, now this this phrase here, Guiyo. It may sound a little bit familiar, maybe just a little bit. Yeah. So uh, some of you guys may remember. Don't pretend. I know you do. This, the Guiyomi from 2013. Man, that was seven years ago already. Yes, if you remember the Guiyomi, it's that, it's uh, you know, it's a trend, uh, that meme that went crazy because of these Korean stars doing, doing the cute numbering. Yes. So. Guiyo means cute in Korean. So the phrase nomu guiyo woyo means you are so cute. Okay? It's, uh, mostly, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, mostly cute will be used on girls, but you know, seeing as how seeing as how pretty a lot of these Korean boys are, you'll probably be alright using it on a Korean boy as well. Yeah? Go, go, tell, go tell your guy friends that they are guiyo. Yeah? Okay, so again, nomu guiyo wo yo. So again, the yo on the end is uh, like a politeness thing. So you can you can leave out the yo. Uh, but the important part is obviously the nomu guiyo. Guiyo wo yo. Means you are very cute. Okay? Like this guiyo me thing. There you go. So it's starting to make sense now. It's falling into place. Guiyo. Alright, let's move along. All right, so our cat fact. Yes, why am I showing you a picture of a hairy man with a dish of some? Wait, what? What meat is that? Yes. So, cats appear on traditional Christmas menus in some parts of Switzerland, and they maybe still do. It's not. I mean, it's not super popular. It's not like the Swiss are snacking on cat meat all the time. I hope not. Um, but yes, uh, recently this uh, this video came out about this guy in Switzerland who apparently cooks five star cuis cuisine with cat meat. Mm, questionable. Might have been a spoof. They don't know. But uh, yes, cats were on the menu traditionally, especially the during Christmas time in the regions of uh, Lucerne, Appenzoll, uh, Jura. I think that's how you pronounce it. And in the canton of Bern, the capital. Right. So, um, yeah, they, uh, the people there tried to get it banned. They tried to um, make it illegal uh, to, um, for people to consume cat and dog meat back in 1993, but the Swiss parliament rejected it. Mm. So it's still legal. Yes. So you can legally still eat your own cats or dogs. Yeah, kind of gross, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if a lot of people that still do that. But I, I hear it's obviously not it's not super popular. I don't think it will go down well. But just so you know, it's legal there. If really one day you you want to chow down on that fat cat of yours, been like, oh, I've been fattening you up for years for this glorious moment. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, bunnies. Rabbits! Oh, look at them. There's two of them. Okay, so rabbits, rabbit fact. Rabbits love company. They are, like us, social animals. So if you only have one rabbit, it will become lonely and sad. Um, even though you may be there, um, but they tend to prefer companions of their own. You know, same size, same, you know, birds of a feather kind of thing. Yeah, so the uh, best combo for rabbits is a neutered male and female. I mean, I'm, I really don't care about the neutering thing. Uh, that's, that's just my opinion. You know, I'm happy for you know, the animals to have their, I don't know, their full secondary sexual characteristics. You know, let them have their hormones, let them develop normally, and you know, if they want to pound some out, make some babies, you have to deal with it, right? But um, you know, it's uh, it, it's the, it's not a it's not like it's a prerequisite to spay your animals, even though a lot of people may disagree with me and will make it sound like you know it is compulsory you must cut your dog's balls off who said that oh yeah that's right Bilber. yeah so yeah i mean whatever you know you get a get a male and female and you know at least probably neuter one of them um 
But yeah, if you're gonna do it, you just I guess you know neuter both so they don't start spawning, making more friends so they don't get lonely. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So yes, your rabbits do get lonely if they are by themselves. Okay. How they know, I don't know. But yes, apparently they get they get sad and depressed, and you don't want that. Okay. So uh, let's move along. Oh wait, who's this? This is the goddess. Oster or Ostara. Uh, so yeah, because today is Easter, I thought we'd do a little bit on Easter. Um, so yeah, and it links to the rabbits as well. So um, yes, as you know, the, uh, the holiday of Easter uh, arose from this Anglo-Saxon holiday celebrating the goddess of spring, this fine lady here. Um, I don't think she was a real lady, but yes, this is the depiction of Ostara, the goddess of spring. Uh, and her uh, iconic um, animals were the hare, and uh, yeah, she's associated with you know birth and fertility. So I guess eggs kind of go in with that. So yeah, you can thank her for Easter. That's why it's a holiday, okay? And you can thank the Germans for the the idea of you know bunnies giving out candy and eggs. Because, uh, yeah, that was uh, attributed to the Germans back in the Middle Ages. They started doing it, and the Dutch brought it to other places in the world. Yeah, it's a bit weird. But I guess, you know, if it's tied to, uh, you know, a celebration of spring, spring festival, then whatever floats your boat. And, I mean, uh, yeah. There you go. So, uh, here's another fun little fact with the Easter holiday. Do you know how much people spend? on the Easter holiday, so probably not much here in Asia because, yeah, you know, Easter is not that big a deal but over in the Western countries they spend a shit ton I'm not kidding in 2018, Americans spent 18.2 billion dollars during Easter 18.2 billion that is like too many zeros Okay, so out of, out of the 18.2, 5.7 was spent on the food so, you know, mostly probably chocolates and fancy rabbit meat. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, mostly. Uh, 5.7 billion on food, 3.2 billion on clothes, uh, and 2.9 billion on presents and gifts for people. And the rest is, you know, miscellaneous, whatever. But yes, so a lot of money, a lot of money. And out of the 5.7 billion dollars spent on food, um, a lot of that goes to these fellas. Chocolate bunnies. You like chocolate bunnies? Do you know how many people consume? Or well, people buy anyway. 90 million of these guys are sold during Easter. 90 million. That's like uh, that's like mooncakes here during you know like the festivals. Yeah, I guess you know it's a, it's like a spike, a surge, and after that they're like on like discount <laughs> clearance uh, post Easter sales actually that probably makes up quite a lot of the sales so the, the post Easter guilt chocolate eating binge that people go on right right don't tell me you guys haven't bought like you know super ri ridiculously cheap chocolate after Easter yeah no you know like jelly beans or marshmallows or I don't know what it was the thought just disturbs me. But speaking of chocolate bunnies, how do you guys eat your chocolate bunnies? If you at all. Because, I don't know. Well, I think most people will start with the ears, right? That makes sense. Um, yeah, I don't know. Some people start with the legs. Or the butt. Yeah, because that's where the chocolate's thicker. Yeah. No, don't worry. I, I don't start with the butt. I start with the face. Ha! Huh. Yeah, no, I, I kind of just, I kind of just snap the head off and, and just you know, start, start from there. I don't know what's, what's your plan of attack for a chocolate rabbit? Because it's, it's really, it's an awkward kind of shape, isn't it? Especially the really big ones. You know, I, I just go for the, the tiny little ones. You can just pop the whole thing in your mouth. You don't have to think about which, which part of it you want to mutilate. You know, first. <laughs> okay, I think that is all for now. Um, oh wait, uh, no, I was gonna talk a little bit about some statistics. Alright, so 
what happens if this MCO is extended again? Okay, so at the moment, uh, this is a breakdown from the Department of uh, Statistics of Malaysia. So they've done some surveys and whatnot. And uh, this is the degree of financial readiness. readiness. So these are, I assume, people who have responded to the survey. And they fall into five categories. So there's people who work at the multinational corporations. Obviously, they're uh, presumably better paid, higher benefits or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the government-linked companies, GLC. All right, and then you have private employees and the people who employ these employees and the people who work from home on a regular basis. <laughs> right, okay, so those are the five categories. And uh, based on the survey, obviously, the, the guys that work at the MNCs are um, better buffered, more well-prepared to handle themselves financially if this MCO is extended. Okay, um... Yeah, and then uh, government-linked companies, they're doing all right. Uh, private, not so well. And self-employed are in the red. So uh, over like 80% of them say they are definitely not financially prepared. Um, because I guess a, a lot of self-employed businesses are the ones that, you know, kind of go, um, they, you know, they, they run a stall or they operate, uh, you know, a small business. So it's, it's like hand-to-mouth style um, businesses that rely on a... A, you know, daily steady income to feed themselves, right? So now that the MCO is in place, they can't operate their business, so they get zero income, right? And perhaps they didn't have as much saved up for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, the way it rolls. So yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, and then uh, this is a uh, estimate, of course, on how long their savings people feel their savings can last. So this is the Department of Statistics Malaysia survey. And uh, yes, so these these are uh, this is kind of a breakdown, I guess, of the people that fall into these categories. Yeah. And uh, how and what, what proportion of them feel, believe they can last for. So, um, yeah, you know, obviously the majority say, you know, yeah, they can't, they can't do more than, do more than two weeks. Uh, especially the self-employed which I, I guess, you know, is the people that run small businesses and stuff, their own little businesses. So uh, quite a big chunk, almost half of them say they can't last for more than two weeks. Um, yep. And then, you know, as, as indicated in the, the previous graph, as you can see, you know, uh, MNC and GLC employees are better buffered, better prepared to last up to six months. That's crazy. Yes, because obviously there are talks about uh, extending the MCO and not just extending the MCO but also going into full lockdown so I it really kind of feels like full lockdown now but uh, yeah I guess a full lockdown would be a lot more severe than a semi lockdown which is what this MCO is supposedly but man it feels like we're on like full curfew already you know 8 p.m. you get patrols going around keeping an eye on the public getting people to shut down their businesses and go home, you know, things like that. Yep. I mean, it's all, you know, for all the greater good. But you have to think about it. Some, at some point, you know, that's how powerful, how effective our media is. You know, at the, I mean, you know, people have, have taken it quite well in stride. But in a way, it's also peer pressure, right? You know, everyone's telling everyone else to, you know, stay home. No, no, like, don't get me wrong, it's a good thing, you know, that, that we all cooperate we all stay home we don't go out and party and spread the disease more um, but yes I mean you know this is how effective it is right population control so I'm sure out there some guys are getting some ideas they're like hey if we just you know this is this is how we can control the people we have a curfew right everyone likes this right now so let's do that you know let's shut the businesses down earlier let's control the population keep people at home have a curfew you know, it's like wartime. You know, don't come out after dark. Yeah, you know, just maintain this for like a few more years, and then you know everyone will get used to it, and then we'll be living in like a freaking communist country, right? Yeah, roll call in the morning, go to go to work, come back. Don't uh, you know? Don't dilly dally. No freedom. Well, I don't think Malaysia will come to that because. People here love their freedom too much, right? 
I don't know. Let me know what you think. But yes, how long can your savings last? So, what's, what's your plan going to be if they extend this MCO for another, you know, two weeks, a month? God knows how long they're going to they're gonna push it, right? Until they come up with a, with a vaccine, which is, you know, who knows, another couple months down the track, right? If at all. So, yeah, what, what are you going to do if you're... If your savings is not enough, if you fall into this blue category, if you can't survive past two weeks on on your rainy day funds, then what are you gonna do? Right? Rely on the government to give you a stimulus package? Yeah, because that's gonna work really well here in Malaysia. I mean, you know, the, a lot of this is probably all talk. Like, uh, look, in Aus in Australia, they've already the, the government has just ping, they've transferred the stimulus package. They transferred the money into everyone's account just like that you know within a week that was like you know amazing whereas here you're like what the hell you gotta you check and you fill out some forms you gotta, you gotta go submit this uh, you know yeah I don't know how how easy has it been for you have you got your money Is there anyone got their money yet I don't know right so yeah it's it's obviously not not the most well organized but uh, easier said than done I understand um, but yeah, but, but I mean, the, the question still remains, the, you know, the, whatever money that government is going to give you is probably still not enough for you to survive past like a month or two months, right? If you're just going to sit at home and just, you know, keep spending our money away, you know, it's, uh, it's not, uh, not feasible long term, I don't think, right? So at some point, you know, people are either gonna start getting desperate and doing crazy things, or you know, they, I don't know what I don't know what else people are gonna do. Start coming up with new ideas, new businesses. What what cool ideas you got? Let me hear what businesses ideas you have. Okay. Anyway, that's me for today. Signing out. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, financially stable or not. Doesn't matter as long as. You're healthy for now, okay? We'll work out this other stuff later. Okay, so stay strong, guys. And uh, hopefully we don't get stuck in MCO forever. Alright, check you later. See you guys tomorrow, and have a great weekend. Sam out! <laughs>